In this video, we will look at how to solve for the voltage across a capacitor in a first order RC circuit. Recall that a first order RC circuit is a circuit that consists of a single capacitor and only independent sources and resistors. The voltage across the capacitor depends on whether we are solving for the natural or the step response. The natural response is the currents and voltages resulting from the sudden disconnection of a DC voltage or current source, usually due to switching. Under the natural response, the voltage across the capacitor has this generic form. The step response is the currents and voltages resulting from the sudden application of a DC voltage source or DC current source due to switching. Under step response, the voltage across the capacitor has this generic form. The general steps to solve any first order RC or RL circuit are shown here. For a first order RC circuit, the first thing is to decide whether we are solving for the natural response or the step response. After this has been determined, then we need to solve for the parameters that make up the natural or the step response. So let's see how, these, um, how this method can be applied to efficiently solve a first order RC circuit. Consider the first order RC circuit shown here. The switch is at position A for a very long time and then at time t equals to zero, the switch moves to position B. In order to solve this circuit, we need to determine the voltage across the capacitor. The first step is to decide whether we are solving for the natural or the step response. To do this, we need to examine the circuit after switching takes place. If there is, a if there is an independent source in the circuit, then we are solving for the step response. However, after switching takes place, if there is no independent source in the circuit, then we are solving for the natural response. So once moves, the switch moves to position B, then this is the circuit of interest. We can see that in this circuit of interest, there is a capacitor and just resistors. That is, there is no independent source in this circuit. This means that we are solving for the natural response of an RC circuit. And under the natural response, the voltage across the capacitor is given by this generic form and the time constant is R times C. So now we need to determine the parameter V0 and tau in order to obtain the voltage across the capacitor. So let's see how to do that. In order to find the parameters that make up the natural response, first we need to find Vc0 minus. This denotes the voltage across the capacitor just before switching takes place. Before switching takes place, the switch is at position B. This means that this part of the circuit is not connected and can be ignored. Therefore, before switching takes place, this is the circuit of interest. It is given that the switch is in position A for a very long time. This means that steady state has been achieved before switching takes place. Under steady state, a capacitor acts like an open circuit to DC. Therefore, we can draw the equivalent circuit at time t is equal to 0 minus as follows. We have a voltage source and then the resistor and the capacitor is acting like an open circuit and the voltage across the capacitor is Vc0 minus. From this circuit, we can find that Vc0 minus is equal to 100 volts. That is, the capacitor will charge up to a voltage having 
magnitude 100 volts and when that happens there is no current flow in this circuit. The initial energy stored in the capacitor so Vc0 is therefore half C Vc0 minus squared and this is equal to in this case when we plug in the values this comes out 2.5 millijoules. The next step is to find tau using the circuit after switching has occurred. After switching takes place, we see that the capacitor with some initial voltage is now connected across a network of resistors. Thus, the energy stored in the capacitor is going to be dissipated through the network of resistors. To find the value of tau, we can reduce this network to a capacitor connected across a single equivalent resistor R equivalent and then tau is given by R equivalent times C. So the next step is to find R equivalent. This is done using Thevenin, Thevenin equivalent resistance technique. So we can uh, find R equivalent as follows. R equivalent is the resistance seen looking into the terminals where the capacitor was originally connected. Thus, this is our uh, circuit analysis problem. We can see that we have resistors connected in series and parallel. So we start combining the resistors from the far end back towards the input terminals. So here we have 60 kilo ohm in parallel with 240 kilo ohm. And then this equivalent resistance is in series with 32 kilo ohm. Therefore, R equivalent is 32 kilo ohm plus 240 kilo ohm in parallel with 60 kilo ohm and this simplifies to 80 kilo ohm. Thus tau is given as R equivalent times C and substituting the values we can find this value as 40 milliseconds. Now we are ready to find the expression for the voltage across the capacitor. We have already found tau as 40 milliseconds. The constant V0 is equal to the voltage across the capacitor at time T0 plus. Since voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantaneously, Vc0 plus is equal to Vc0 minus which we have found to be 100 volts. Substituting these values in this equation, we get voltage across the capacitor is 100 e raised to the power minus t over 0 0.04 and this comes to 100 e raised to the power minus 25t and this expression is valid for time t greater than equals to 0. Thus, we have found the voltage across the capacitor. We can use the plot command in Mathematica to plot the expression for the voltage across the capacitor. The plot command syntax is as follows. Here, plot range, axis label and label style are different plot options to format how the plot looks. In this case, the time constant is 40 milliseconds. Therefore, five time constants is five times 40, which is 200 milliseconds or 0.2 seconds. We can see that the plot of the voltage across the capacitor uh, after five time constants is practically zero. So this is the shape of the natural response of an RC circuit. 
we can use pSpice to confirm the solution. In this circuit shown here, we are not simulating the circuit before switching takes place. That aspect has been captured by setting the initial voltage across the capacitor as 100 volts. When we simulate, we obtain the plot of the voltage across the capacitor. Now we can go to trace, add trace, and here we can type the expression that we found, which was 100 times exponential minus 25 multiplied by time. And when we click OK, we can see that the theoretical expression and the pSpice expression overlap. So this confirms the accuracy of the solution. Once we solve for the voltage across the capacitor, now we can solve for any other desired voltages and currents in the circuit. Suppose we are interested in finding the voltage across the 60 kilo ohm resistor, which is denoted as V0. This can be found now using circuit analysis. We note that the 60 kilo ohm resistor and the 240 kilo ohm resistor are in parallel. Therefore, the voltage drop across both these resistors will be V0. Thus, we can redraw the circuit as follows. We have the capacitor, the 32 kilo ohm resistor. We combine the 240 kilo ohm and the 60 kilo ohm resistors with an equivalent. We replace these two resistors with a single equivalent resistor. And this will have value 240 kilo ohm in parallel with 60 kilo ohm, which comes out 48 kilo ohm. And this is the voltage across the capacitor. We can see that now uh, this is the desired voltage V0. We can see that we have a simple voltage divider. Therefore, using voltage divider principle, so using the voltage divider principle, we can express V0T as 48 kilo ohm over 48 kilo ohm plus 32 kilo ohm multiplied by VCT. And substituting the values, this comes to 0.6 VCT. And this is equal to 60 e raised to the power minus 25 t. Note that this expression is only valid for time t greater than equals to 0 plus. If we put t is equal to 0, we can see that v output 0 plus is equal to 60 volts. Also, v output 0 minus. This denotes the voltage before switching takes place. Since the switch was at position A before switching takes place, this part of the circuit was not connected. Therefore, V output 0 minus is equal to 0 volts. This is the reason why this expression is only valid for time t greater than equals to 0 plus. However, the voltage across the capacitor is valid for all times t greater than equals to 0. We can use pSpice to confirm our solution. Here we have moved the voltage marker to across the 60 kilo ohm resistor and when we simulate we obtain the voltage across the 60 kilo ohm resistor and if we go to trace add trace and add the expression 60 multiplied by exp minus 25 into time and click OK. We can see that the theoretical and the pSpice expressions match and this confirms the solution.